All right, thanks, guys. The Cavaliers take on the Clippers. 3.30 Eastern tip-off at the Staples Center. The Clippers open the betting as the 10-point favorite. Total at 3.30. And since those markets open this one up, we're actually seeing a slight fade of the Clippers when it comes to the spread. We're also seeing a little movement downward on the total as well. Minus 9.5 and, and 228. So once again, Los Angeles open minus 10, down to minus 9.5. Total open 228.5, down to 228 even. 64% of the consensus is leaning toward Los Angeles. 51% of the consensus is shaded toward the under. And at the moment, the Cavaliers are plus 400 on the money line. Now, Henson and Del Vadova are still out and definitely for the Cavs. Meanwhile, for the Clippers, Danilo Gallinari and Patrick, uh, Patrick Beverly are questionable for the Clips. Uh, L.A. still 11-4 against the number in their last 15. And they're also 6-3 ATS in their last nine at home. 8-1 straight up in those same nine games. They rank second in home three-point shooting as well. Now, Cleveland on the uh, other side, no real surprise here. They rank dead last in road defensive field goal percentage. Uh, they've also won just six out of 31 straight up away from home this year. Now, total-wise, Cleveland's 5-1 and one of the under in their last six, taking on the Clippers. Give me the L.A. Clips, minus nine after buying the hook, and the under 228 in that matchup there. All right, guys, just want to take a quick time out and welcome you to the show. Happy Saturday to you. Got some lines and personal leans out for Saturday's NBA, college basketball, NHL, and MLB action. Huge jam-packed show. And that's why I actually uh, uploaded the full show yesterday at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Thinking about doing that again today, what that really does is give you an opportunity to interact in a live chat setting uh, with myself and other uh, other subscribers that you've guys been interacting with uh, in the comment section. Well, this time it's live, so uh, I should be able to join you guys. I did join uh, last night and had a great conversation with a bunch of guys in the chat box live. Um, but yeah, I, I might be able to get to it tonight if I am. Feel free to drop me a line. Uh, I'm very, uh, very open. I find my subscribers and their opinions very, very uh, interesting. And I love interacting with you guys. And actually uh, had a conversation in Spanish last night uh, in that chat box. So anyway, check me out uh, tonight. We're going to uh, premiere the full show at 630. I may be on to chat with you, maybe not. Uh, you'll have to find out and uh, tune in at 6.30. But essentially, it's the full show, not broken up into bits and pieces. Um, so I'll see you then. I also want to remind you to check me out at patreon.com slash Brock Page. That is my website. And I'll tell you what, we're off to a hot start in the MLB. Uh, last four MLB picks. Uh, we have three wins and one no decision. Uh, looked like that was a, a, a nice win on Estrada yesterday for the A's. And uh, he left the game after six innings of shutout ball. And the uh, A's bullpen threw up all over themselves. But anyway, hot start, 3-0-1 in our first four picks for MLB. Plenty more where that came from. Check me out at patreon.com slash Brock Page. Plenty of free content there. Link for that website is in the description section below. All right, let's go ahead and get into some picks. That's what we're here for. Let's go ahead and take a look at some lines and personal leans. Once again, all starts Eastern Standard Time. And on deck, we've got Celtics, Nets, 6 o'clock Eastern tip-off in Brooklyn. <clears throat> Now, we saw a flip of the lines in this matchup here. Brooklyn open as the one and, excuse me, one and a half point dog with the total at 228 and a half. Whole bunch of movement in this one. Uh, we're seeing movement toward Brooklyn when it comes to the spread. We're also seeing movement downward on the total as well. Two and a half point move toward the under. So right now, Brooklyn's minus one and a half total down to 226. Let's go ahead and recap that one more time. The Nets open plus one and a half, now minus one and a half. Total open 228 and a hook down to 226. Boston's minus 105 on the money line. Now, Al Horford is questionable for the Celtics tonight. Meanwhile, for Brooklyn, Alan Crabb is listed as questionable as well. The Nets are just 2-5 of five straight up in their last seven. They've also really just been getting pounded by Boston in the past couple of seasons. They're just 1-11 and 11 straight up in their last dozen taking on Boston. Now, Brooklyn uh, ranks 25th in defensive rebounding and 24th in offensive field goal percentage. 
Now, Boston on the other side, they're third from the stripe. Their opponents are shooting just 44% from the field. And when it comes to the total, Boston is 4-1 of the under in their last five, taking on Brooklyn. The Nets are 3-0 to the under, taking on Boston this season. So with all that said and done, I'm going to lean toward the road dog in this one. I'm also going to purchase the hook, slide it up, and take Boston plus two in the under 226 in that matchup there. Next game, Kings. Rockets, 6 o'clock at the Toyota Center. Houston open 10 and a half, total 228 in the hook. A lot of action on this game. We're not seeing a whole lot of movement. Uh, we're seeing pretty good two-way action on both the spread and the total. Spread remains 10 and a half, total moved up to 229. So once again, Houston open then remains minus 10 and a half, total open 228 and a half, up to 229. 60% are leaning Houston, 65% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Kings are plus 440 on the money line. Now, if you like the Kings in this matchup here, they do rank fifth in the NBA in road scoring. They also rank fourth in shooting the three ball. They're five and four against the number in their last nine. And they also rank fourth in defending the three ball. Now, Houston on the other side, they rank 27th in offensive field goal percentage. They're shooting just 44% from the field. They're also ranking 28th in offensive rebounding and 23rd in defensive field goal percentage as well. Now, total-wise, Houston's 8-1 to the under in their last nine, 5-0 to the under in their last five at home. Give me Sacramento plus 11 after buying the half a point and the under 229 in that matchup there. Next game, Blazers, Pistons, and that is going to be a 7 o'clock tip-off in Detroit. The Pistons open minus 5, total 215 and a half. We're seeing movement upward on the spread and downward on the total, minus 5 and a half and 215. So once again, Detroit open minus 5, up to minus 5 and a half, total open 215 and a half, down to 215 even. 57% are leaning Portland, 80% uh, shaded toward the over. Right now, the Blazers are plus 200 on the money line. Now, Portland is 9-1 straight up in their last 10, 6-4 against the number in that same category. They're 10-2 ATS in their last dozen on the road, and they rank second in offensive rebounding. Now, Detroit ranks second to last in offensive field goal percentage. They're also 25th in defensive field goal percentage as well, 47.1% in that category there. They're also just 2-4 and four straight up in their last six. Now, total-wise, Detroit's 5-2 and two to the over in their last seven. Portland 4-1 and one to the over in their last five. I'm going to purchase the hook, buy it up, and take Portland plus six in the over 215 in that matchup there. Next game, Magic Pacers. That's going to be a 7 o'clock Eastern tip-off. In Indiana, uh, Indiana open minus three, total 205. We're seeing a slight fade of Indiana and movement toward the under, two and a half and 204 and a hook. Once again, Indiana open minus three, down to minus two and a half, total open 205, down to 204 and a hook. 57% are leaning Indiana, 75% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Magic plus 115 on the money line. Orlando's just one and five straight up in their last six away from home. They failed to cover in five out of those six games. They also ranked 27th out of 30 teams in road scoring. They're 27th in road field goal percentage as well. And they've covered just eight out of their last 20 games at the current point spread. Indiana on the other side, very, very good against the number in their second of a back-to-back. -back. They're 9-4 ATS in their second of a back-to-back. -back. They're also 15-7 against the spread, taking on teams between 450 and 550. When it comes to the total, Indiana's 4-1 to the over in their last five at home, taking on Orlando. If you're into historical trends, Orlando, two out of their last four, got over the number as well. Give me Indiana minus two after buying the half a point. And the over 204 and a half in that matchup there. Next game, Heat, Knicks, 730 Eastern tip off at Madison Square Garden. The Heat opened five and a half, total 209. Uh, not a whole lot of movement on the total, although we did see a full one point move toward the Heat. They're now minus six and a half. So once again, Miami opened five and a half, up to minus six and a half, totals 209. 67% are leaning Miami, 55% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Knicks are plus 245 on the money line. Now, Winslow, Richardson, and Magruder are all out for the Heat tonight. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have Von Ley and Trier listed as out for the Knicks. This is a really big number on the road for Miami. 
with all those key players out, I really don't know. I'm very, very confused as to what is going on with this line. But what I do know uh, is that the Knicks rank dead last in offensive field goal percentage. They just can't put the ball in the cup. They also rank 28th in scoring in Miami on the other side. They're second in road points allowed. They're also third in road defensive field goal percentage. Uh, they rank fifth in road defensive rebounding as well. So I don't even know if the Knicks are going to be able to score uh, points tonight. Now, oddly enough, Miami's 3-3 three and three to the over in their last six, and the Knicks are 4-2 and two to the over in their last six themselves. So I got to lean Miami, even though they got some key players out. I got to go Miami on the road, minus six after buying the hook, and the over 209 in that matchup there. Next game, Raptors, Bulls, 8 o'clock in Chicago. Toronto open minus 11, total 219. A lot of movement in this one. Uh, we're seeing a steady and consistent fate of Toronto against the spread. We're also seeing a four-point move downward on the total, down to 215. So once again, the Raptors open 11, down to minus 10. Total open 219, down to 215. 74%. Leaning toward Toronto, 51% shaded toward the over. Right now, Chicago's plus 450 on the money line. Uh, Otto Porter's out. Zach Levine's doubtful. Chris Dunn is doubtful. All for Chicago. And for those who don't know, Chicago's got a whole slew of guys who uh, have been out for the season. Uh, Valentine, Market, and Hutchison Carter. They've been all out for the season. So even though it's not an impressive uh, group of starters and role players, I mean, that's the core group of Chicago. Um, you know, all those guys. So who knows what kind of product Chicago is going to be able to put on the court tonight. Uh, what I do know is that they're 2-8 and eight, uh, straight up in their last 10. They've also failed to cover in four out of their last five at home, and they rank second to last in home scoring. Uh, Total-wise, Chicago is 6-3 and three to the over in their last nine, uh, obviously giving up a bunch of points and markets over-adjusting. Uh, Toronto 7-3 to the over in their last 10. I'm going to lean Raptors minus 10 in the over 215 in that matchup there. Next game, Sixers. T-Wolves, 8 o'clock in Minnesota. The Sixers open minus 5, total 231. We're seeing half point fade of the Sixers and a two-point move downward on the total. 4.5 and, and 229. Once again, the Sixers open minus 5, down to minus 4.5. Total open 231, down to 229. 68% are leaning Philly, 62% shaded toward the over. Right now, Minnesota's plus 160 on the money line. Uh, Joel Embiid out for tonight's action. Uh, Ennis is questionable for the Sixers as well. Meanwhile, on the other side, Taj Gibson is doubtful for the Timberwolves. Now, Minnesota 7-2 straight up in their last night at home. Very good at home this year. They're also 6-3 against the spread in their last night at home as well. Uh, Minnesota, not bad in the second of a back-to-back -back either. 6-5 and five against the number in their second of a back-to-back. They're covering 63% of their games as the official home underdog, and they rank fifth in home offensive rebounding. Now, Philly on the other side, they're 24th in road three-point shooting. They're also 20th in road scoring, and they failed to cover in three out of their last four games. Now, total-wise, Minnesota's 5-2 and two to the under in their last seven. Give me the T-Wolves plus five after buying the half a point, covering the spread at home, and the under 229 in that matchup there. All right, next and final game for the show, it is going to be, did I skip? No, I have it here. Uh, Grizzlies, Suns, 10 o'clock Eastern tip-off in the Desert Talking Stick Resort Arena in Phoenix. Uh, flip of the lines in this one, Memphis open plus one, up to minus two. Uh, total open 220, up to 220 and a half. 65% are leaning Memphis, 66% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Suns are plus 110 on the uh, money line. Don't want to get too far into the specifics in this one. I like Memphis minus two and the under 220 and a half in that matchup there. All right, let's go ahead and slide into some March Madness. And we're going to begin with Texas Tech taking on Gonzaga. 609 Eastern tip off at the Honda Center. Gonzaga opened four and a half, total 139 and a hook. And since those markets opened this one up, we're seeing steady two-way action when it comes to the spread. Although we did see a one-and-a-half point move downward on the total, down to 138. So uh, once again, Gonzaga, minus four-and-a-half, total open 139-and-a-half, down to 138. 
54% of the consensus is leaning uh, leaning toward Gonzaga. 56% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Red Raiders are plus 175 on the money line. Texas Tech, it ranks 165th in road scoring. They're also 203rd in road offensive rebounding. The Raiders rank 131st in road three-point shooting, and they're 100th in road defensive rebounding. Texas Tech has failed to cover in three out of their last six when catching the points. They're also covering just 50% of their games as the official road underdog. They are 0-1 against the spread in their lone game that tipped off at the current number. Now, Gonzaga on the other side has been an absolute juggernaut. Very, very fun to watch this year. They're 23-13 and against the spread overall for the year. They're covering 65% of their games when laying the points. They're also covering 64% of their games after four or less days off. Gonzaga ranks first in the country in scoring. They're averaging 88.2 points per contest. They also rank first in offensive field goal percentage. They're shooting 53% from the field. One more thing to note about the Bulldogs. They rank sixth in defensive field goal percentage. Their opponents are shooting just 38% from the field. Now, total-wise, Gonzaga is 5-4 and four to the over in their last nine, 8-6 and six to the over, taking on teams averaging more than 72 points per contest. Texas Tech, 60% to the over in their last 10. I'm going to purchase the half a point, slide it down, and take the Gonzaga Bulldogs, minus four, in the over 138 in that matchup there. Next game, Purdue, Virginia, 849 Eastern tip-off in that matchup there. The Cavaliers open minus four and a half, total 127. And once again, good two-way action when it comes to the spread. Not a whole lot of movement when it comes to that number there. Although we did see a one-point move downward on the total, down to 126. So once again, UVA open and remains minus four and a half, total open 127, down to 126. Purdue, well, 56% of the consensus is leaning towards the Boilermakers. 55% shaded toward the over. Right now, Purdue's plus 165 on the money line. Now, if you like Purdue in this matchup here, they've certainly been a fun team to watch, but they do rank 108th in college basketball and offensive field goal percentage. They're also ranking 199th in offensive field goal percentage on the road. They're shooting just 41% from the field away from home. A couple more things to add about Purdue. They rank 141st in defending the three ball. They're also 215th in free throw percentage away from home. They've covered just four out of their last 11 after four or less days off. Now UVA on the other side, one of the best covering teams in college basketball, actually better than Gonzaga when it comes to covering the number. They're 24 and 11 against the spread overall for the year, 14 and 5 ATS away from home. They're covering 67% of their games when laying the points and 71% against the spread as the official road favorite. A couple more things to add. Very, very impressive stats here. UVA is covering 77% of their games after four or less days off. They're a perfect 6 and 0 against the number in their games that tipped off at the current point spread. Virginia ranks first in college basketball in points allowed. Their opponents are scoring just 54 points per contest on average. Now, total-wise, Virginia is 8-3 and three to the over, taking on teams allowing less than 67 points per contest. Markets over-adjusting for this stingy UVA defense. Meanwhile, Purdue 69% to the over, taking on teams averaging 67 to 72 points per contest. Like I said, I think the markets... And the public over adjusting for the stingy defense. I like UVA minus four after buying the hook and the over 126 in that matchup there. All right, so let's slide into some NHL action. Uh, unfortunately, I got a late start today. Have to skip the early games, but we are going to begin <coughs> with Montreal taking on Winnipeg. Seven o'clock Eastern puck drop in Winnipeg. The Jets open 175, total five and a half, a lot of movement on the money line in this one, a 25 cent fade of the Jets when it comes to an outright winner. They move down to minus 150. So once again, Winnipeg open 175, down to minus 150, totals at five and a half, 63% of the consensus is leaning toward Winnipeg, 72% shaded toward the over. 
Right now, Montreal is plus a buck and a quarter on the money line. Winnipeg plus 175 on the puck line. We have Price projected in net for Montreal. Hellebuck projected in net for Winnipeg. The Jets are third in home scoring. They're also 14 and 7 straight up, taking on teams between 450 and 550. Meanwhile, Montreal, well, they're just 357 in their games at the current market price. And total-wise, Montreal 7-1 to the over in their last eight, taking on Winnipeg if you're into historical trends. So with all that in mind, I'm going to lean Jets minus 150, getting the job done at home in the over. Five and a half goals in that matchup there. Next game, Sabres, Islanders, 7 o'clock Eastern puck drop in Long Island. The Islanders open 230, total five and a half. Not a whole lot of movement in this one. Just a nickel fade of the Islanders when it comes to the money line down to 225. So once again, New York open 230, down the minus 225, totals five and a half, 70% are leaning New York, 57% shaded toward the over. Right now, Buffalo's plus 180 on the money line. The Islanders are plus 115, laying the goal and a half. We have Hutton projected in net for Buffalo. Robbie Lehner projected in net for the Islanders. New York's 13 and 6 straight up in their last 19 at home. Buffalo 0 and 5 against the spread in their last five. And of course, when I refer to the spread in hockey, I say this every video, but I'm actually referring to the puck line. So once again, Buffalo has failed to cover in their last five puck line plays. They're also 0 and 5 against the puck line in their last five on the road as well. Now, total wise, the Islanders, well, they are uh, second in goals allowed giving up just 2.3 goals per contest on average. So I'm going to lean Islanders minus one and a half, getting the job done on the puck line for plus 115 and the under. Five and a half goals in that matchup there. Let's hope for an empty netter and a shutout. Next game, Toronto, Ottawa. Seven o'clock puck drop in Ottawa. Toronto open 210, total six and a half. We're seeing good movement on the money line and total in this one. Uh, Toronto is now 225, total moved up to 7. Once again, the Leafs open 210, up to minus 225, total open 6.5, up to 7 flat. 74% are leaning Toronto, 76% shaded toward the over. Right now, Ottawa's plus 180 for an outright win at home. Toronto plus 115, laying the goal and a half. Sparks projected in net for Toronto, Anderson projected in net for the Senators. Uh, Toronto is just 2-9 and nine against the spread in their last 11. 1-5 ATS in their last 6 on the road. Meanwhile, Ottawa, they've been able to keep it close against Toronto. 8-1 and one against the spread in their last 9, taking on Toronto. They're also 2-1 and one straight up in their last 3. 4-3 and three straight up in their last 7. When it comes to the total, the Maple Leafs are 4-2 and two to the under in their last 6 on the road. Give me Ottawa plus 1.5, getting the job done on the puck line. And the under, seven goals in that matchup there. Uh, wow, I really skipped the Caps and the Lightning. Wow, that's a that's a party foul on me, guys. I don't know why I did that. I don't have that game in my notes. That's horrible. Uh, I don't even want to cap that on the fly because that's so complex. I can't believe I did that. Anyway, moving on. Sorry, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section below about... Washington at Tampa Bay. I mean, I got to imagine Tampa Bay is going to get the job done at home there. But, whew, man, how do I skip that one? Anyway, next game, Columbus Blue Jackets taking on the Preds. 8 o'clock puck drop in Nashville. The Preds open 135, total 5.5. Not a whole lot of movement on the spread, although we did see a 20-cent fade of the Preds. When it comes to the money line, they're down to minus 115. So once again, Nashville open 135, down to minus 115. Totals five and a half. 51% is leaning toward Columbus. 83% shaded toward the under. Right now, Columbus is plus 105 on the money line. Nashville plus 230 on the puck line. Sergey Bobrovsky projected in net for Columbus. Soros projected in net for Nashville. The Preds are five and two straight up in their last seven. They rank fourth in home goals allowed and third in home shots allowed as well. Uh, Nashville is 10 to 5 straight up in their games at the current market price, and they're winning 75% of their games, taking on teams over 550. Now, when it comes to Columbus, they rank 22nd in road shots allowed. We're looking at 30 shots per game in that category there. They've also dropped five out of their last six on the road. When it comes to the total, Columbus is 6 and 1 to the under in their last seven. Give me Nashville minus 115 in the under. Five and a half goals in that matchup there. Next final game for the show, 
And like I said, I cannot believe I skipped that Caps Lightning game, but I'm sure we'll probably be able to cap that about seven times in the playoffs. Anyway, next and final game for the NHL, it is going to be Vegas Golden Knights, San Jose Sharks, 9 o'clock puck drop in San Jose. The Sharks are minus 140, total open six, up to six and a half. 58% are leaning San Jose, 57% shaded toward the under. Vegas is plus 115 on the money line. San Jose plus 180 on the puck line. Subban for the Golden Knights, Jones for the Sharks. The Sharks rank third in scoring, second in shots allowed. Give me the Sharks, minus 140, and the under six and a half goals in that matchup there. All right, next and final sport. We're talking about some Major League Baseball. So excited for baseball to be back. It's been a fun couple of days already. But we're going to start with the Braves taking on the Phils. 4.05 Eastern first pitch at Citizens Bank Park in South Philly. The Phils open the betting as the $1.35 favorite total of 8.5. And since those markets open this one up, we're seeing a 15 cent move toward the Fightins. We're also seeing movement upward on the total as well. Minus 150 in 9 flat. So once again, Philly open 135 up to minus 150. Total open 8.5 up to 9 flat. 58% of the consensus is leaning toward Philadelphia. 69% shaded toward the over. Right now, Atlanta's plus a buck and a quarter on the money line. We have Wilson, probable for Atlanta. Nick Pavetta, uh, probable for Philly. I do like where the public's uh, leaning towards in this matchup here. Uh, Phil's very good, very strong lineup. Just bats out the, uh, out the wazoo. Uh, Pavetta, very strong pitcher. Looking to see him throw some good stuff on a very warm day in South Philly. Uh, I'm going to lean toward the public in this one. Give me Philly minus 150 in the over nine runs in that matchup there. Next game, Astros Rays, 6-10 in Tampa Bay. Houston Open minus 130, total 7.5. No movement on the total, although we did see a 15-cent fade of the Strohs in the early going here down to minus 115. So once again, Houston open 130, down the minus 115, total 7.5. 65% are leaning Houston, 67% shaded toward the over. Right now the Rays are plus 105 on the money line. We have McHugh for the Astros, Glasnow for the Rays. Uh, Glasnow had some good starts last season, a uh, quality pitcher. Uh, I think we'll see a good performance out of him, although if they go to the bullpen, I think the Astros are going to capitalize on that. Um, probably going to be a closer game than we think. I like Houston getting the job done here in a very tight spot. Give me Houston minus 115 and the under seven and a half runs in that matchup there. Next game, once again, I, I said it yesterday, this is a great series. Uh, this has been a great series for the past couple of seasons. I'm talking about the Cards and the Brewers. 7-10 Eastern first pitch in Milwaukee. Milwaukee open 120, total eight and a half. Just a 10 cent move when it comes to the money line, and that is on the Brewers, up to minus 130. So once again, Milwaukee open 120, up to minus 130, totals eight and a half. 57% are leaning Brewers, 65% shaded toward the over. Right now, the cards are plus 110 on the money line. We got Hudson for St. Louis, Woodruff for the Brewers. I like Woodruff in this spot here. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to be dominant, but I think he's going to do enough to keep them uh, in the game. I think when they pull him, we're looking at about a 4-3 to three game until they get to the bullpen. But overall, I think Milwaukee is going to hold on. Give me the Brewers, minus 130, and the over 8.5 runs in that matchup there. Next game, Cubbies, Rangers, 8.05 in Texas. Texas, Texas, Texas. It's all about Texas if you talk to somebody from Texas. Anyway, the Cubs open 145, total at 10, and a pretty good movement on both the money line and the total. Nickel move toward the Cubs, and a full one-run move downward on the total. We're looking at minus 150 and nine flat. So once again, Chicago open 145, up to minus 150, total open 10, down the nine runs. 64% are leaning Chicago, 52% shaded toward the under. Right now, Texas is plus 130 on the money line. You Darvish, starting for the Cubs. Volquez projected to start for Texas. I uh, like you Darvish in a little bit of a revenge spot here. Uh, I think he feels comfortable pitching in Texas. So give me the Cubbies, minus 150, and the under nine runs in that matchup there. 
Next game, Diamondbacks, Dodgers, 9-10 in Los Angeles at the short porch. Dodgers open 175 up to minus 185. Total 7.5, 58% are leaning Los Angeles, 74% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Diamondbacks are plus 165 on the money line. <clears throat> we have Zach Godley slated on the bump for Arizona. Kenta Maeda for the Dodgers. Uh, Zach Godley, I think we're going to see the old Zach Godley, some good stuff. Um, keeping that ball low, getting a lot of ground balls today. Uh, I am going to fade the, uh, the, the line move here. Um, I think Arizona should keep it close. Um, they're getting a good, pretty good price on the money line. I think I want to maybe take them on the run line. Give me Arizona plus one and a half on the run line and the over seven and a half runs in that matchup there. Next and final game for the show. It is going to be Red Sox Mariners 9-10 Eastern first pitch in Seattle. Boston open 160 down to minus 155. Total open eight and a half down to eight flat. 68% are leaning Boston, 72% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Mariners are plus 135 on the money line. Rodriguez on the bump for Boston. Mike Leake projected on the bump for Seattle. I think Seattle will keep it close here. Give me Seattle plus one and a half in the under. Eight and a half runs in that matchup there. All right, folks, that is going to do it for me. If you're watching me on the premiere show, thank you for commenting in the live chat box below. Certainly uh, good to see each and every one of you uh, active. Uh, once again, got to remind you to check me out on my website, patreon.com slash Brock Page. We do picks. We're doing incredible in the end, uh, Major League Baseball right now so far early in the season. Uh, plenty of free content there. Uh, just open up the description section below and click the link that is patreon.com slash Brock Page. But most importantly, thank you for watching today's program. I really hope you enjoyed all this free information, this free content. And don't forget to check me out at patreon.com slash Brock Page.